everyone, today I'm going to do my Booktubeathon 2018 wrap up. So as always, I'm gonna talk about the challenges first and which books I read to complete those challenges. I'm gonna talk about how many pages I read and then I'm just gonna get into thoughts on all of the books that I read, probably a little bit quicker because I also gonna mention them in my monthly wrap up. But yeah, I'm really excited. This was a super successful booktubeathon for me and a super just in general great experience. I loved it as always, my sixth year. It is honestly so exciting to see how many people join booktubeathon every year. But I also say I feel really cool that I've been here the whole time. Like I experienced the very first booktubeathon and I've participated in every single one. I'm sorry, that makes me feel cool. But I also love seeing so many new people participating, so many new people discovering the community every year. It's, it's exciting, it's great. Let's just get into it. So as I said, I'm first gonna go through the reading challenges and what I read to complete that. So the first challenge was to let a coin toss decide your first read and I had To Kill a Kingdom, which I read. The second challenge was to read a book about something you want to do and for this one I read Summer of Salt because I also really wanna spend a summer on an island by the sea. The third challenge was to read and watch a book to movie adaptation. As I said in my TBR, I'm gonna do something where I read a book and then find a movie that is inspired by a similar thing or that has some kind of connection to it. So the book that I read was To Kill a Kingdom and the movie that I watched was The Little Mermaid. To Kill a Kingdom is like a very very loose, not even retelling, it's just inspired by The Little Mermaid. So they were kind of connected in some way. That's fair enough for me. The fourth question was to read a book with green on the cover. For this one, I read Giant Days Volume 6. I'm pretty sure was the one with green on the cover. The fifth challenge was to read a book while wearing the same hat the whole time. And I read Giant Days Volume 5 while wearing a hat. The sixth challenge was to read a book with a beautiful spine. And for this one, I read Georgia Peaches and Other Forbidden Fruit, which I think is beautiful. And the final challenge was to read seven books. And I actually ended up reading nine things overall this week. This is a perfect transition into kind of stats. I'm not going to do stats like last year because this time around I feel like it's not very exciting, but I read nine things total. I listened to two audiobooks, read four graphic novels and three books. I also read 137 pages of Of Poseidon by Anna Banks and 80 pages of Fire Study by Maria V. Snyder. So my total page count was 1719 and that is an average of 245 pages a day. I'm honestly more than happy with that. I really didn't expect to read that much. Okay, as you might know, in my monthly wrap-ups, I always go in chronological order because I just find that best for me personally. But because I'm also going to talk about all of these books in my monthly wrap-up anyway, in chronological order, today I am going to do the graphic novels first, then the audiobooks, and then the novels. Because the graphic novels that I read, the four, are Giant Days, volume five, six, seven, and eight. And I read them throughout the week and I really didn't want to separate each volume. So I read four Giant Days volumes and I think that says more than enough about how much I love this graphic novel series. It's, it's just so good. It's just so good and it just brings me so much joy. It's my happy place and I feel like this is something that I could return to again and again when I just need to pick me up. I think this is a wonderful graphic novel series. If you have not yet read this, I highly, highly recommend it. It has such amazing characters and what I really love about it is, and I said this before, you will find a character to relate to in this graphic novel series. I gave volume 5 3 stars, I gave volume 6 4 stars, I gave volume 7 3.5 stars and I gave volume 8 probably also around 3.5 stars. And I'm so glad that I finally decided to continue because I think I read volume 4 in like May of last year so it was about damn time. And then for the audiobooks, the first one I listened to was One Dark Throne by Kenda Blake. This is the second book in the Three Dark Crowns Quartet. This probably has a name. I honestly think this series has so much potential but is really, really underwhelming. The series does not need four books. This dragged out so many things that did not have to be dragged out. This honestly, I feel like would have worked best as a duology. 
I don't know what is supposed to happen in book three and four. It's just gonna be more dragging it out and I don't, I honestly don't get it. I will probably not continue the series. I just don't think it's worth it. I gave One Dark Throne 3.5 stars because listening to it was okay. I didn't like actively dislike anything. I just think it is so underwhelming. And I also listened to A Stranger in the House by Shari La Pena. This is an adult thriller and I really did not like it. I gave it two out of five stars because it was not as like problematic and just outright offensive as some of the other thrillers that I have read, but it was like the same old concept. I talked about it in my vlogs. I'm just so sick of thrillers just being about like, women are crazy and that's the whole conclusion to the whole thing. It's not original, it's not unique, it's nothing special. It is just, <sighs> I hate when books do like a last chapter plot twist, when it's just a plot twist that is so blatantly obvious just annoys me when I can tell that the author is feeling like super smug. Like, look at this plot twist. Didn't expect that, huh? And I'm like, um, I saw that coming from chapter one. Like just, pfft. And then the three novels that I read, the first one that I finished was To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. This is a YA fantasy that has pirates and sirens and it was so great. I really, really love this. Really the only reason I did not give it a full five stars was because I wanted much, much more from the Romans. I felt like it took way too long for anything to happen. Like, I just, I didn't feel attention. That's it. I enjoyed the romance in the last pages so, so much. I think it was great. I just wanted all of this tension. I wanted all of this angst and it just, it was not there. So I ended up giving it like a four, 4.5 stars. So I still really loved it. I'm just, ah, this could have been perfect if the romance had been more intense. I also finished Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. This was wonderful. This is such an atmospheric book. You are right there with the characters. It is so easy to just feel like you're on this island, like you're part of this group, and there's so many interesting characters in there. It has a kind of mysterious aspect, and I highly, highly recommend this. It has a really, really wonderful female-female romance as well. I just, mm, this one was really, really good. I gave Summer of Salt four out of five stars. And finally, the last full novel that I finished during Booktubeathon 2018 was Georgia Peaches and Other Forbidden Fruit. And I absolutely love this. I can honestly only recommend you go and watch my vlogs to see how much I love this, how much I was into this from basically the very first page and how emotionally invested I was in this. I honestly have not yet recovered enough to to really talk about this. I just know that I love this. I, I just think it's fantastic. I'm gonna go into more details on like the problematic elements, but also on the elements that I loved in my Goodreads review, but also by the time I'm gonna do my always wrap up, I will have kind of gathered my thoughts and will be able to give you a little bit more detailed thoughts and really talk about what I think is problematic. But for now, all I can say is that I personally absolutely loved it. I'm so glad that this book is in my life. It is definitely on my top books of the year list and I obviously gave it five out of five stars. And yeah, that is everything that I have read in Booktubeathon 2018. As I said, I'm so happy. It was a great week. I read so much. I'm still super motivated to continue reading and I just had an amazing time. I cannot wait for next year, even though it's kind of scary because next year is gonna be a year where a lot of things change for me. And so I think it's gonna be really exciting to see where I will be in life, if I even have time to participate. I feel like Booktubeathon is just because it comes around at the same time every year. It's just always really interesting to kind of see where you are in life and yeah, I don't know, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me know if you participated in Booktubeathon and how it went for you and you know, don't be discouraged if you didn't complete all of the challenges, if you didn't read seven books my God. So I just really, really hope more than anything that if you participated, that you had a great time and that you feel like this week was, yeah, just as good as mine was, whatever you actually ended up reading. And yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. I guess I'll see you soon. Bye.